Premix 10 Mixer has a newly designed panning concept. So this is a video describing how it's used uh, with the different strip types that are available uh, in the mixer. So what I've got is I've got just a simple mono channel with some pink noise coming through it. And I've got some different buses set up here just so we can see the different ways in which we can pan. So first off, you can see that the version 10 mixer has a panner and then the buses up above. This is different a lot. Uh, from version 9 and previous, uh, where each bus had a panner. Um, now with the panning uh, separated as an object, we pan in one place and then bus to many places. So it becomes quite a bit easier. So the panner has a bunch of different views, so to speak. Uh, we can look at it as a stereo, uh, we can look at it as a surround, or we can look at it as a 3D panner. Now because the panner is just describing a location in, in space, um, we can look at parts of that or all of that to help us streamline what we're doing. And this will all become apparent as we're going through it. So the default view is a stereo. And when we're looking at a mono channel being busted into a stereo, it really couldn't be simpler. We pan and we pan and we get the movement as we would see. Yeah? Um, there are some additional controls than what you would normally see in a, in a left-right panner. We've got a, a divergence and an, an LFE. Uh, those are mostly if we're doing things like a 2.1. So I've got a 2.1 bus here, and you can see if I dial up my LFE, I get the, the sub-channel uh, coming into play. So I'm going to need to make a change if I'm going to want to look at panning into a surround bus. So by changing to my 7.1 bus, I'm now panning, and you can see I'm, I'm panning center. And if you... I'm, pan using the stereo, you can see I'm panning between left, center, and right, as I normally would, but I, I want more control than that. So by right-clicking, I can choose the surround panner. And at this point, what I get is I get my surround, I get divergence, and I get my LFE that I can dial up and down dependent, yeah? Then I have my 3D. So for 3D, we can go one step further, and we can choose the 3D panner. The 3D panner adds my Z. And that allows me to bring the signal up and down to feed the Z axis. So here I have some multi-channel strips that I've made earlier. Um, and as you can see, I've got differing views on each one. Now this is totally capable of being done, but if you ever want to change all of them at once, we can change all of them just by using the control here on the right hand side. Change them all to 3D. Likewise, if there's a selection of ones you want, you can hold down shift and control and use the right click functionality to change just one of them. So panning multi-channel strips is a bit different than panning a mono because there's, well, more than one signal to deal with. Uh, and the first off is a, a stereo. So stereo into stereo, um, how do we do that? So the default for this is something that's called uh, balance panning. So rather than actually moving the image left to right, all we're doing is we're turning the right leg down and returning the left leg down. And that's how the panning occurs. This is the default way that the panner was working in previous Pyramix versions. If we want to make changes to this, or if we want to do anything advanced with the mixer, there's another view of the mixer that we can actually call up. Uh, and we can do this by control clicking on the mixer, or by using the surround panner icon and bringing it up. So now what you can see is you can see a representation of how I'm panning at the moment. So you can see there's a left and right speaker, the red, uh, and you can see there's a white dot and a red dot there, which are the left and right leg of the stereo bus. And then you can see that what I'm doing here is I'm diminishing one and the other. Yeah. But with multi-channel strips, we get a couple of choices into how we actually do this, and they're all chosen in what's called the dual source mode. So over here, what we can do is we can choose between balance, which is the default for stereo. We can choose what's called single pan. So single pan gives us the left and right as an image. We can then move that image around, uh, but we can also make the source size bigger and smaller. So we can actually tighten up the stereo image and actually make it a mono or push it out to a full stereo. And then we also have dual pan. So dual pan allows us the control of each individual object completely separately. Yeah. And you can see here in the overview window that what I've now got is I've got two distinct controls for left and for right. So this changes slightly when we move to a 7.1. So by choosing the 7.1, you can now see in my overview, I see loads more of these. And you can see when I'm panning through them, I get a 
view of how that uh, object is, is feeding into each speaker. Likewise, I can change the panner type here, so I can be looking at this, and then I have the ability to grab them from the overview window without this one up, so I can sort of do my work without needing to open up another window, so to speak. And again, if I involve the 3D panner and set my panner type 3D, you can see then I've actually got double controls for everything. So when it gets to this, it is quite nice to be able to open this one up because then it allows me the control I need to move each object around very simply. So 3D panning is quite nice with the overview window. Now, last but not least, let's have a look at dealing with multi-channel, uh, large-scale multi-channel uh, strips being panned into buses. So I'm going to look at a 13.1 strip that I've got available here, and I'm going to put it into my 13.1 bus. So as a default with everything panned in the center, I'm feeding my strip out to the bus on a one-to-one -one sort of basis. But I open up my panner. If I open up my panner, you can see that each element is actually directly sitting on top one of the speakers. Now, when we start dealing with multi-channel, we don't have the option to go dual pan or balance or whatever. It is a single pan environment. The idea behind it is that you're going to keep your image and simply move that image around in the panner, wherever it is you might need it to go. Now, that works very well for keeping that image connected. Also, then we have the source size so we can make it bigger or smaller uh, to fit uh, in a room and, or bleed a bit more. Uh, likewise, we also have divergence that's available everywhere as well, uh, which is in 1D, 2D, and 3D form. So if I dial some up, you can see that I've got just along the x-axis, the x and the y-axis, and the x, y, and z axis. But very importantly here, what I also have in the single pan mode is I have rotation controls. These rotation controls allow me to move my signal in a manner that keeps the image but moves it within the space. So here we go, and I can rotate and I can rotate, and I can rotate. And this allows you to do mind-bending things, but in reality what it does is it just keeps that image locked whilst moving it through a larger space. So finally, just a little overview onto what you're gonna see if you're panning to multiple places at once. Because I can, I can actually pan to a number of places. So for instance here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna go have a look at this stereo. I'm gonna turn that stereo to single pan and I'm gonna to choose to look at a stereo bus. When I choose a bus, that bus appears in my panner. If I choose another bus, that bus appears in my panner as well. And they're just overlaid on top of one another. So when I pan into the stereo, the stereo left and right to take what it can and panning into the 7-1 at the same time, the 7-1 takes what it can, and so on and so forth. And I can keep doing this again and again. A final thought is, what do you want to do if you want to pan to buses in a different way? So if I wanted to pan to my stereo differently than I wanted to pan to my 7.1? Well, all we need to do at this point is add another panning control bus. And then what we'll do is we'll choose to pan uh, using panner 1 for the stereo and panner 2 for the 7.1. So panner 2 gives me the 7.1, and panner 1 gives me the stereo. There you have it. There's a good overview to the panner in Pyramid 10.